So, today's uh, video is all about how you go about helping your interviewer have a great interview. So, as I'm sure you know, how well your interviewer conducts the interview is going to have an impact on the outcome. Now, interviewers at Amazon genuinely are well trained. But even after about 350 interviews myself, and I've spoken to other interviewers at Amazon who have done over a thousand interviews, and we all agree to a person that to a greater or lesser degree, we still get nervous going into interviews. So anything that you can do as a candidate to help your interviewer have a better interviewer is gonna be a win for you. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how to do that. But before I do that, I thought I would just give you a little peek behind the curtain in terms of what your interviewer is having to do and think about whilst they're interviewing you. So you can get a sense of why, even after a thousand interviews, an interviewer still might be nervous going into an interview with you. So, when you're interviewing at Amazon, effectively, there are four things going on in your head simultaneously in parallel. The first thing is, and this is obvious, I'm gonna be listening to what you're saying to me. Obvious, right? But also, what I'm doing on top of that is I'm going to be typing up and recording what you've just said to me a fraction of a second ago. So I'm living in the absolute present, listening to what you're saying to me, but equally another part of my brain is typing up what's just happened in the fractional past. Then on top of that, the next thing that I'm doing is as I'm listening to you now and I'm remembering what I'm typing that you've said in the past, I'm imagining and thinking of what follow-up questions are the right questions to ask you so that I can dive a little bit deeper into your example in line with the leadership principle that I'm currently asking you questions on. So my mind is in the present, it's in the past, and it's thinking about the future. Then on top of that, the next thing I'm doing is I'm thinking about time. I only have 45 minutes to maybe an hour to get Minimum is, let's say, three questions and answers from you. So as you're talking to me, I'm going to be looking at the time and I'm going to be thinking, how many questions have I got left to get through? How far is the candidate through this question that they're answering for me? Are they going really fast and therefore am I just going to get high level answers and I need to slow them down? Are they going really slowly and I need to push them on to get to the end of this question so I can move on to the next question and tell them and coach them into being moving faster with their answers. So there's those four things going on in my head all at once whilst I'm interviewing you. So there's a lot of cognitive load. So anything that you can do to help ease that cognitive load is gonna be great for your interviewer. So I have my trusty notes with me. This one's a detailed one, and I'll take you through those tips. Okay, so the first tip that I have is that, especially in Amazon, although I'm sure this is true of almost all businesses, and in a work from home situation, the likelihood is that your interviewer has literally just hung up the phone. I mean, they're probably not on a phone set, right? They're on headsets. So they've probably just been on a call with somebody else about something completely different and their head is in a completely different space. And they've probably just literally said, I'm sorry, I've got to jump, I've got to go to an interview. And snap, they're dialed into your chime and they're there with you. And their head has had no time to reframe into the interview state. So they're probably gonna ask you something like, hi, how are you doing, how's it going? And they are genuinely interested because they're nice people. But if you just give them a response of, yeah, I'm fine, or yeah, I'm okay. What you're not doing is making use of a great opportunity, serendipitously, to help your interviewer get their head into the interviewing space. So if you give it a little bit more detail, hi, yeah, I'm having a great day. I've really enjoyed meeting all of the people that I've met. I'm really looking forward to this interview with you. It's only a fraction of seconds, or one second or two, but it's just about enough time for the back of your interviewer's mind to get themselves out of the meeting that they've just been in and into the meeting with you. It doesn't take up a lot of time of your interview, but it will help your interviewer settle into their skin of interviewing. Okay, so the next one is about the pace in which you speak. If you're a very naturally fast speaker, like I am, 
you're going to want to slow down because as I said, they're typing. If you're a naturally slow speaker, you're probably going to want to speed up because as I said, you and your interviewer are on the clock. A good tip in terms of practicing this is to find yourself a friend, co-opt them and talk to them and get them to type what you're saying. If you're going a million miles an hour and they can't keep up with you, they'll soon let you know. Equally, if they're way ahead of you and they're able to spell check as they go along, you know you probably aren't picking up the pace enough. But that's a really important one in terms of the comfort of your interviewer. So practice getting the right pace for your examples. Okay, so let's go on to number three. Try not to repeat yourself. As I've said, your interviewer is going to be typing up what you say. They are recording it in black and white. It's no longer black and white, right? It's like ones and zeros in kind of code and computing, but whatever. Your interviewer is going to be recording it. So usually when we are trying to get people to remember what we're saying as human beings, we repeat ourselves because we all know repetition drives memory. But that's not, it's not necessary here because they've literally typed it up. So repeating yourself is simply a waste of your time and quite honestly, your interviewer's time. Don't do it. Tip number four. If you know you have a temperamental broadband connection, you have a temperamental broadband connection. There's nothing you can do about it. And sometimes it's just a horror show when a call drops, the interviewer can't get you back, you can't get them back, the clock is ticking. When you get back online, everybody's conflustered, they've lost the plot, they've lost the flow. So an idea I picked up on probably a couple of years into my interviewing when this was happening to me quite a lot, was I would ask the candidate for a direct dial phone number. Sometimes I would have it on their CV so it would be easy, other times I wouldn't have that with me and therefore I'd ask them. Offer to your interviewer and say to them, I have a dodgy connection. So here's my mobile phone number. So if the line does go down, you can just call me direct. If that happens then, there'll be almost no interruption of service. You've agreed with your interviewer. The plan will be that if the line goes down, they just call you on the mobile and you can move forward with the interview. The time is a great benefit, for sure you don't lose time. But more than that, your interviewer isn't flapping about thinking, oh my God, how am I gonna get hold of this candidate and then thrown off their game. Dial your mobile phone number and you're back in business again. Okay, so the final tip that I have is, and I've said this a few times before in a few different videos, so maybe it's getting boring if you've watched a couple of my other videos, but I can't tell you how important it is. And that's about avoiding acronym, acronyms, acronyms and jargon. Now, it's really hard to tell from the job descriptions that you'll see people have on LinkedIn or in the comms that you get from your recruiter about your panel or about your interviewer to know exactly what job those individuals have. Sometimes it's really obvious because it's the same job title as you've had, but sometimes it's just a weird and wonderful Amazonian job title. So don't assume that your interviewer understands the acronyms and the jargon associated with your work. Sometimes they will, more than often than not, I would assume they won't, particularly when it comes to the bar raiser who's unlikely to come from the same business area as you're interviewing from. Unless they're acronyms that are just so universally known, I'll make one up, KPI, just don't do it. If you're gonna to need to use that acronym because you've got a very long phrase that you'd like to um, synthesize up because you're gonna to have to use it time and time again in this example, use it, but explain to your interviewer what it is you mean by it. So you've explained it and then you're free to use it again and again as you go through the rest of the example. But never use an acronym and never use jargon without making sure that you have explained to your interviewer what it means. I've had some disastrous interviews where someone's used an acronym with me, more fool me, I didn't stop them at the time and ask them to explain to me what it was. And then as the interview went on, I come to the realization that actually understanding what that acronym, 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 um, I hope I didn't say acronym earlier. Anyway, what that acronym is about was really fundamental to understanding the story and then 
I'm completely lost and a load of time has been wasted. Now, as I said, more for me, as an interviewer, an experienced interviewer, if you do use an acronym, I should stop you and say, what does that mean? But equally, I, I might just not want to break your pace. So don't put that pressure on me. You take it yourself. Make sure that if you're going to use an acronym or jargon, you've explained what it means. Okay, so that's my tips on how to help your interviewer have a great interview. If you found that useful, please do like, please do subscribe. It means that as, the, as I post videos, which I do weekly, you won't miss out on any of the new content. It also means that other um, candidates like you who are looking for help will see my content more readily in the algorithm. Great, so, and the one other thing is, I'm loving, I'm getting more visits, I'm getting more people viewing my content, which is super exciting. I would love to know where you are all coming from. So post in the comments, but where are you from? Maybe what role it is that you are um, doing your interview prep for. Be super interested to know where I'm reaching and who I'm reaching. I really hope this stuff is helpful for you guys, and I'll see you next time.